Hey, hey. So I wanted to uh, talk about energy flow plan and what better way to do it than, of course, me out moving some energy. It's like beautiful ah, late summer morning. I mean, that sky is just majestic. And that's really the whole point of, you know, why I created the energy flow plan. Um, it's really been like 25 years of in the trenches research as a physiologist and just working with patients and clients and merging, you know, some of the great Western medicine with a lot of the Eastern philosophies and ancient yogic science. So energy flow plan, I start every calendar month with looking at you know, it's really about the lunar cycles, but I tie it into, you know, what month it actually is. And that way you set a trajectory that becomes very pragmatic for, you know, what, what goals are you looking to accomplish this month? But then can you wield all the energy that you actually have, that you already have as physical energy and all of the direct energy that is always infinitely available all around us in the environment. And we all have access to this and we all have the physiology for this. And so energy flow plan really is coming into like tomorrow's a new moon and coming into a new lunar cycle what are we going to set intentions to accomplish this month? And then actually having a plan in place to make sure you are nourished, that you're fueled, and that you're tapping into all of the resources that you have available. So I address three things on the energy flow plan that are a little bit more um, ancient and tradition, really looking into or utilizing a little bit of traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, and then yogic science. So I intuitively tap in and look at the chakra system. I look at the tattvas, which are the five elements that are always available to us as humans and, and that we serve to as well. And your energetic anatomy in, in yogic science, we study 10 bodies, including the physical body, but also including your subtle body, your radiant body, your aura. So each month I tune in and it's like, what are we looking to get accomplished this month? So when working with a client, like, what are we looking to get done? What are we moving the needle forward on? And looking at all areas of life, health, love, career, environment, what, what do we want to do? And then we're going to tap in and we're going to say, okay, of, we look at just seven chakras, they're more than just seven, but of the seven major chakras in the system, what are we really going to focus on, on nourishing? So tapping in and then it's, okay, we get this hit. We're really going to pay some additional attention to nourishing, let's say, the crown chakra this month. So what are the foods that can support the crown chakra? What are we wearing? What crystals can we be using? What exercises, what meditations are we doing? And then we look at the tattvas, or the five elements in nature, right? Water, air, ether, fire, and earth, and how we as humans are always in a relationship with these five elements. We have them within and we share them without. And so being in a relationship with these five elements, again, each one has a quality about it. And so where do we see perhaps we may need more harmony with a particular element and calling in attention to that element or working specifically to enhance the quality of that element and the relationship with that element that you have as a human. So maybe it's fire this month. How can we work with the element of fire in a very beneficial way that you are energized from it? And then we look at 
your energetic anatomy. And again, of the 10 bodies, where do we see we get to focus some more attention this month and tapping in? And are there energy blockages that we could open up more if we're focusing some attention on perhaps maybe it's the subtle body this month? So again, what are the exercises, the kriyas and kundalini yoga that I utilize with clients a lot? What are the uh, meditations? What are the mantras? What are the mindset strategies? What is the nutrition? And it becomes this really powerful dossier that you're not just writing down, hey, what I'd like to do this month, but then you're putting direct aim toward doing it with all that you've got. Your entire energetic anatomy strong, your ability as a human to work with the five elements, and your alignment, the way that your hormones secrete has a lot to do with your chakra system. So getting that aligned has everything to do with your endocrine function and your endocrine function is really what dictates your emotions. So getting things kind of moving in this beneficial direction. But energy, it's two forms. It's direct from the environment and then there's physical energy. And physical energy is only potential, right? We can store that potentially. So you can be as fit as ever. You can do all the workouts But are you wielding everything you've got? Are you a fit? Are you a fit, just physical body? Great. But can you also align your chakras? Are you radiant? Is your aura projecting and protecting you? Is your subtle body keen, sensitive, receptive, right? And so that is what an energy flow plan is all about. I hope that explains it and excited to work more deeply with this and sharing this teaching. And every month it's really doing this and we like to do it in our agency for the business and then also for ourselves personally. And we do the same for our clients. So we may do an energetic flow plan for a business and we may do an energetic flow plan for an individual. And every month we like to share kind of our, our elite mystique agency energy flow plan. So for example, I'm filming this and today is the day before uh, the September new moon in Virgo, right? We're in Virgo season. And so I, we called in specific things for our agency for this month, and we will be sharing that out this week. But I wanted to just give a general kind of tutorial on what an energy flow plan is. All right. So much love. Peace out.